Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be talking about something that we all have, even if we don't want to admit it, um, but we all have bad days. And so I was thinking about this, I originally got this idea um, when I was talking to you guys about social media detoxing, which I'll put a link to that video in the box below if you haven't seen it. Um, but we were talking about how social media is a highlight reel and how most people only show the good things. And they do that for a number of reasons. They do that because, you know, we want to share the happy things in our life. These are, we want to share the things we want to remember and the moments we want to remember. Um, and yes, there are some people on there with ill intentions that post things to show off and for whatever reason, you know, to try to make themselves feel better. Um, but we talked about how what's not shown in our social media feeds are our bad moments. And so I figured, you know what, I think it's kind of important to talk about that and to talk about how we all have bad days. Um, life is hard and things can very quickly feel overwhelming. And so I sat down and I made a list of some of the things that I like to do that help me when I'm in a funk. But the very first thing that I do is I give it to God. Um, when I'm in a bad mood or I even feel a bad mood coming on, um, I either sit down and try to quietly just say the Jesus prayer on my Goboskini, um, or I go up to the icon corner and I'll do a paraklisi or I'll do um, the akathist for times of trouble depending on what the situation is. Um, or sometimes I just go up there and I light the incense and I sit down and I just read my Bible and I try to just refocus. But I know that by giving whatever it is that I'm worried about or stressed about or um, you know, heard about, I know that giving it to God is going to make me feel better. There is an immense amount of relief and comfort in giving things to God. And um, I know that prayer can change things. Prayer can change anything. I mean, miracles happen every day. I believe that God can do anything. Um, but even if those external circumstances don't change, I know that by praying, it is going to um, affect my ability to handle those things. And so my number one thing that I always do when I'm in a mood is I pray. So another thing that I do um, when I feel, you know, a mood or I'm angry or any kind of emotion that feels overwhelming is I journal. Um, I am the type of person where I am an emotional journaler. Um, but what happened at one point is I was going back through old journals and I found some entries that um, I wrote when I was either stressed or angry or whatever. And it made all those emotions kind of bubble to the surface again. And I found that I was mad about something that happened way too long ago that, that I should even, even be thinking about it, let alone to still be feeling these kinds of um, emotions over it. And so I was like, you know what? I think it's a good rule of thumb um, to not journal things or moments that I don't want to remember. So if it's not something that I want to relive in the future, it's probably best not to put it in my journal. Um, and so I made that rule and this was several years ago, but then when I, what I started to realize was, um, journaling was a release of those emotions for me. And so I needed to vent those feelings. Um, number one, venting actually balances your equilibrium. Um, but two, I just needed to get them out of my head. I needed to get out of my head, period. And so what I did was I have one journal, um, and it's black, <laughs> um, that I journal my nasty moments in. Um, when I'm just feeling just upset or angry or just really sad or, again, anything I don't want to relive, I write it down in my black journal. Now, sometimes I will rip the pages out and burn them or trash them or whatever, because just like when you say things in anger sometimes, sometimes you write things in anger. And I never want anybody to go back and read that journal and maybe think that I felt differently about them than I do or have their feelings hurt um, when that's not really how I feel. It's just how I felt in that moment. And um, so, yeah, that's my 
that's my advice for journaling if you are an emotional journal like I am. Um, but another way that I like to journal is by sitting down, and this is a very quick way to shift perspective and to kind of step out of a situation and look at it from a different perspective, is to write a list of all the things you are grateful for. Um, I know I talk about gratitude journaling all the time, but this is why I'm so big on journal on gratitude journaling. Um, and I know that I've said this on my blog and I've said this on social media and I, I've said it on my channel and other videos, um, but it's really hard to be discontent when you're counting your blessings. When you are sitting there and you're making a list of all the things in your life that you were grateful for, from the very big things like your health and your family and your faith, um, all the way down to the little things like the sunshine that came through the window in the morning or, you know, that cupcake that you had that was really good or um, your husband brought you home Reese cups and that just made your night because Reese cups can do that. Um, whatever it is, when you're writing down all of these things that you're grateful for, you realize how undeserving you are. You realize how God has given you all of these good things in your life, even though you have done nothing worthy to deserve them. So yeah, gratitude journaling for me is just a quick, easy way to gain perspective and to push that bad mood out and replace it with feelings of gratitude. Another thing to do, um, because especially if you are a mom, um, if you're a mom, period, uh, especially if you're a homeschool mom, where my homeschool mom's at, you know what I'm saying. Um, there is no, there is no time in life for self-care. Um, we have to really, as moms, as women in general, as, whether you work or, you know, you have a husband and a home to take care of, or you have kids and you're a mom or you're a homeschool mom or not, um, Moms just tend to put themselves last. It's what we do. We are built to take care of other people um, and we want to make sure that the people we love are taken care of. And so by the time we're done taking care of our husbands and our children and our homes and our careers and work, if you work, um, by the time you're, we're done doing all those things, there is no time left for us. And if there is time left, we are so exhausted most of the time that we aren't thinking about doing something for ourselves. And so when I feel especially just worn out, when I just feel really worn out, when I feel like I've had a really stressful day, um, that's when I make self-care a priority. And it could be going and running a bubble bath and lighting some candles and playing some quiet music or listening to an audiobook or reading a book in the tub or whatever. It could be any number of things that help you relax. I mean, you can run that bath, put some essential oils in, drop a bath bomb in there, and it can be life-changing. Another um, thing that I like to do when you know I just feel grumpy or sad or whatever is I like to find things that make me laugh. I love to laugh. And so um, one of my go-to things, if I just need a good chuckle, you know, is to get on YouTube and I just search um, comedians on Britain's Got Talent or America's Got, you know, America's Got Talent or any of those type of shows because they're always, you know, clean. And um, even my kids have started doing this. I'll catch them just pulling up um, these funny videos. And so we'll just look for stuff to laugh at. And it just, laughter really is... Um, I don't want to say I don't want to say laughter is the best medicine, but um, but laughter is a medicine. It does feel good to laugh, and laughter actually increases dopamine and oxygen levels. And so, when you increase your oxygen levels, you're actually cooling your stress response system. Another thing that always helps me, and there are two ways that I do this, um, but it's to get outside. Getting outside always helps me. And sometimes I will make a cup of tea and I will go sit on the back deck in the quiet and just listen to the birds and the wind and the rustling of the leaves. And I'll just, you know, feel that sunlight on my skin um, and breathe the fresh air. And that just makes me feel better. And I'm sure there's some scientific reason on why this happens. And again, maybe it's like laughing and it raises your dopamine levels and all of that. But um, I don't know what it is, but I love to be outside. Being outside always puts me in a good mood. Um, if I'm able to, then um, I will go for a walk. And it could just be a quick, you know, brisk 
15 minute walk, but it's good because you get all of those benefits of being outside, you get the fresh air, you get the sunlight, but you also are physically exercising and exercising always puts me in a good mood. Um, a lot of times I will go for a run and running, I swear that when I run, it's like I run my stress out. Um, I can be so built up and wound so tightly and if I go for a quick run, I come back feeling like a new woman. Another thing that's important to do, and if I'm being honest, this is probably the one that I do the least, um, but it's talking to someone. I am, as much as I love to talk, um, I am not good at talking about my feelings. And the reason for this is I don't like dumping my problems on other people. And I say that as a person who encourages people to come to me with their problems because I love being able to help somebody. I want, I want the people that I love to know that they can come to me at any time and it's not going to stress me out. I'm not going to feel bad. It's not going to bother me. I'm not, I'm never too busy, um, for the people I love. But when it comes to myself, I don't feel that way. I feel like everybody has so much going on in life and the last thing I wanna do is to dump my problems on their plate. And um, part of the reason is because I all, like I said, I always try to take a step back and put what I'm stressed about into perspective. Um, and usually when I do that, even though it, it would probably still help to talk to somebody, but when I put it into perspective, I realize that most of the things that I'm stressed about are petty for lack of another word. Um, and that's not to say that there's not real things like real problems that I stress about and real issues that I stress about. Um, but but in the big picture, I know that it could always be worse. I'm not one of these people that compare myself to people that have it better or who have more or any of that. I always compare myself to people that have less. I always compare myself to people that have more things going on in their life. And I think, how can I possibly sit here and complain about my problems when there are so many bigger things happening in the world, when there are so many real issues that other people are having to deal with, how can I, no matter how big my issue might be, um, I always just kind of feel like that. And so I don't talk to people. And I think that's partially why journaling helps me. Um, I feel like that replaces my need to talk about things. Um, now, mind you, I talk to my husband and I talk to my spiritual father about everything. I just, I, I don't know. It's just, it's not me, I guess. But something that totally is me that I love to do, and I tell my kids this all the time, um, and my husband knows this, and I mean this with all of my heart, is that I could be in a mood. And when my kids come and give me hugs and they snuggle me um, or they let me love on them for a while, um, I just feel so much better. Those snuggles just make me feel so much better. Like if I've had a rough day and my husband comes home and just hugs me for a few minutes, I can literally feel all of that stress melting off of me. So um, yeah, snuggles are always good. Something else that helps me um, when I'm feeling stressed, it's serving others. I love to serve others. Um, one of the things that I do is I am a wish grantor with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And so I work directly with kids who are getting their wishes granted. And I love meeting these children and I love meeting their families and I love playing even such a small role in their wishes coming true. But if I have learned anything in my years of doing this, um, is that I have nothing to complain about. I mean, when, you, when you're serving others who have real, real issues going on, I mean, these are children that have life-threatening illnesses um, and you see their families and you see what they're, they're going through, but you also see the joy on their faces and the love that they have for each other and um, the way they are pushing through these illnesses. Um, that just makes me feel like I should never complain again in my life. And the last thing that I'm going to mention 
Um, and this is something, honestly, I would probably put this at number two if I was putting these in the order of how frequently I do them. I always pray when I'm in a mood. I try to stay as prayerful as possible. And this kind of ties in with that because I feel like when I'm in those moods, I need to be thinking about God as often as possible during my day. And so one thing that I love to do is listen to positive, uplifting, inspirational music. Um, I am the type of person where music literally touches my soul. Um, the music that I listen to can put me in any number of moods. And I think this is why it's so important to regulate the type of music that you listen to. So I love to listen to Byzantine chant, um, but I also love to sing. I love to sing. I'm always humming. I'm always singing. Um, and so I love just good uplifting music that I can just sing along with. And so usually my go-tos are like, I love listening to Lauren Daigle, um, who is a Christian singer and I just, I love her music. And so she's always um, one of the playlists that I go to. I go to her albums um, and I listen to it. And I'm actually going to make a playlist. I'm gonna to try to link it in the description box. But if I can't, just go to my, um, my channel and hit my playlist and you'll find favorite Christian music. And so I just love to listen to inspirational music. It just, um, it makes me feel better. And so I know that as Orthodox Christians, if you're Orthodox, you know what I, I mean when I say this. Um, sometimes when you listen to Christian music, there are ideas um, that you know, you'll hear in certain verses that we may not necessarily agree with. We know that this isn't what we are taught. Um, but I can easily remove those and focus on the things that I know are true and that I agree with and that make me feel better about this situation. Um, and so, yeah, I love to listen to good inspirational music. And if all else fails, there is always chocolate. I'm only kind of joking. I'm only half joking because you know that chocolate actually helps your body release serotonin, which is like it's natural pick me up. Um, and so chocolate actually does make you feel good. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that the next time you're having a rough day, number one, I hope that you'll remember that you're not alone, that every single one of us has bad days and sometimes it's more than a bad day. Sometimes it's a bad couple days and that's okay. This too shall pass. Um, but I hope the next time you're feeling lousy um, and you need a way to kind of shake it off, I hope that you will Think of something that you heard in today's video and that it will help you make your day a little bit better. So once again, thank you guys for watching. Um, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and ring the bell if you want to be notified when I post videos in the future. And I will see you guys next time.